Hi guys, this is part two uh, of the video on the DLP uh, projection TV. Oh, hey kitty. <laughs> Let's have a look at uh, the lamp. I've already got that unscrewed. This comes out pretty easily. It's pretty standard elliptical reflector uh, high pressure arc lamp. It looks in pretty good condition, except there's a little bit of uh, whitening on the top of the lamp. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. Yeah, you can see a little bit of white there. I think this lamp is pretty much at the end of its life, although it still produces a good amount of light. And in here, let me see if I can get a flashlight. You can see the color wheel. That's what's probably producing all that noise. Looks like this will come apart pretty easily. Just take the back uh, panel off here and this couple of screws in the bottom and up here and this thing should just slide out. Hopefully the uh, lens is going to clear. Let's see if I can right push this up. Oh, looks like it'll be pretty good. Oh, something is cut. Well, these cables, I'll have to disconnect those. There we go. And there's the whole projector assembly. Yeah, as I thought, the lens is covered with dust or something. Maybe that's what was degrading the image. Oh, look at all that dust. That must be cooling the uh, DMD chip. So that's a pretty long... Oh, it's not, the, not bad. There's the color wheel. color wheel motor probably connects to this. Overheat or over temperature sensor. I wonder what that's for. Some sort of sensor. And let's see if this thing will power up as it is. Maybe we can uh, project something. That comes apart very cleanly. Let's give this thing a try. Okay, the lamp is ignited. We've got some light. The lens looks uh, almost aspherical. It probably has to be to, to uh, project such a wide image over such a short distance. I wonder how far this uh, thing can focus. It probably doesn't have a very good focal range. It's interesting how far the uh, dust has built up there. It's built up following the profile of the heat sink. I don't know if you can see it very well. But there's gaps in between the fins. <laughs> it's getting brighter. You can see something being flashed. Now, yeah, where, where is it projecting? Let me get a piece of paper. Ah, it's saying check the fan number three, probably because I've unplugged that fan. Let's just uh, plug it back, plug it back in and see what it does. Let's be a little bit daring and do it while it's running. I can get it to fit. There we go. Oh, and now it's doing something else. Uh, check the signal. Let's uh, get some signal to it. Certainly not very bright at all. This is probably only a few hundred lumens at most. It's not. It's pretty much not suitable at all for a uh, use as a front projector, unless you have a very very dim room. 
that screen produces a very high amplification. As if you notice on these TVs, if you're off axis at all, the brightness is very low. Obviously what they have is a Fresnel lens behind this that collimates the beam parallel and then a diffuser that diffuses it slightly in the vertical uh, direction and much more in the horizontal. Because typically you're sitting about at the uh, level of the screen but at various angles sideways. So it's actually pretty efficient that way. Okay, there's an image. It probably looks brighter on camera than it does in real life, so it looks rather dim. Anyway, let's see if we can pull this thing apart further and get at the color wheel. Let's just wipe this lens clean and stick it back inside and see if the image quality is any better. Oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff on it. That's much, much better. Okay, that definitely looks better than it did before quite a lot better, a lot less uh, ghosting when there's black areas on white images. Okay, here's the first cover coming off, and we don't see much in there, it looks like it's just a mirror. Uh, let's see, where. what else can we take off? Looks like this color wheel assembly may just unscrew. And here comes that assembly, it looks like. Something is holding it. And it's out. Not much in this thing, just a uh, cover. There's the wheel with a little tiny motor. It doesn't spin very well. Definitely a brushless motor with this uh, four connections of three phase leads and a neutral, and that must be the uh, phasing sensor. Yeah, a little black uh, bar which is, uh, obstructs a light uh, infrared emitter probably, emitter and detector. Let's see if we can get this thing out of there. Ooh, looks like the light is carried by a little light guide, uh, probably a reflective, aluminized piece of glass. So the light comes the light from the lamp. This is a uh, an elliptical reflector which um, focuses the light down to a point, so it probably focuses it down to that point right there, and the light just goes through this guide and goes through some more optics over there. And here is the color wheel. Um, I'm not sure if I can get to the bearings on this. Uh, don't know if there's anything I can do to fix it. The reflection is uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. That's because the, these are mirrors and they reflect uh, light that's not needed, so when they pass light, you get the proper red, green, and blue. And this is not one piece of glass, these are six individual sections with very small gaps in between them. I also noticed that this light pipe is not solid glass, it's actually hollow. I think it's just uh, basically uh, four mirrors glued together into a box. Let's delve deeper and see what's under this thing. There we go. So, the light comes through the light, comes through the light pipe, goes through a couple of lenses is bounced up through another lens off that mirror then through this lens into the DLP chamber Let's see if we can get in there that one actually looks like it's all yeah this thing's cast aluminum I wonder how we get in there if we can get in there let's get the lens off and here comes the lens 
that's all a nice assembly. Yeah, you can see like going right through it. And let's see if we can see the DMD. Oh, better not put that down that way. Oh yes, there is the DMD chip. A little bit of dust on it. Come on, focus. This must uh, be, oh yeah, this is an optical uh, prism block here, right in front of it. So I think that's responsible for uh, getting the light to hit it at a slight angle, so the mirrors can either bounce it away into the beam, uh, beam dump or into the lens. I don't know if we can go any further. What we could do is power this thing up and see if we can see an image on the DMD itself. Looks like it's not going to run without the lamp, so we're going to have to run this with the lamp in. Uh, let's see how bright this thing is. I think we can see the, uh, the image on the DMD. Nice. Let's just get to uh, reflect some more light into it. Yep, there's the image. Oh, that is definitely quite bright. Uh, I wonder if we, uh, I wonder just if this is bright enough to burn a bit of paper. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yes, that is quite powerful. This thing could be fun. Now this is cool. There's the image on the DMD. It's strange seeing an image like that appear on a chip. If we were to put the color wheel in, we'd probably get color. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, color wheels back in. Let's put something, reflect some light in, and there we go. We got a color image. That is really cool. It's not something you see every day, and it looks even better in person. And you just don't get the feel for how this actually looks when you're looking at it on camera like this. The best way I can describe what looking at this DMD is like is uh, like you're peering into a window. The resolution is so high, of course you can't see any pixels from uh, this size. And the, it's very bright, so it looks almost like a high dynamic range scene. You just have to see this. You can't, yeah, you can't, you can't really look at this on a video. Okay, I think I'll have to call it quits for tonight. Uh, stay tuned for the next part. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.